Today, we're gonna to talk about aspect ratio for your PowerPoint slides. Now, the aspect ratio for your PowerPoint slides is something that you probably haven't considered much before this, but I think it's gonna be crucially important in terms of making sure your PowerPoints look professional in the courtroom. And it's especially important if you're in front of a jury. Now, you might not normally think about aspect ratio because when, for example, you're writing something in a Word document, you never have to decide about what paper size you're gonna use. You just start typing. But that's not as simple when it comes to PowerPoint. And that's because of the history of monitors. So it used to be that years ago, everything used to be in a four, three aspect ratio. And by that, I mean four units wide to three units up, it's a ratio. And so four by three, uh, 1024 by 768 was a typical number of pixels in that aspect ratio. And you might remember that shape and size from the tube monitors that we all used to have uh, at our desks. And while you might think, well, that's an old thing that I don't really have to worry about anymore, sometimes even very modern courtrooms still have monitors that are four by three aspect ratio monitors. And so you have to be aware of what you're stepping into. Uh, these days, most TVs that we have and the video that you're watching now is 16 by nine aspect ratio. That's more of like the wide screen. So it takes uh, a wider 16 to a, t a not as tall nine. And you're even starting to see that in some federal courthouses as well. Here's a screenshot from the Northern District of Illinois where they used to have a mix of four by three aspect ratio screens and some televisions. Now everything now is 16 by nine, which makes things a lot simpler. And there's 16 by nine monitors even mounted in the jury box. Now this is a topic I recently covered in a webinar that I did on doing PowerPoint. So to illustrate the difference, uh, I put the screens with the wrong size PowerPoints made for them. And so if you take a four by three or an older aspect ratio monitor, like the squarish ones, and put a new 16 by nine slide on it and you present that, uh, the slide will look fine. You'll still be able to see the entire slide, but you're gonna lose some real estate at the top and bottom of the screen. Similarly, if you take a 16 by nine screen, like the one that you're watching this video on now, and put a four by three aspect ratio PowerPoint on it, you're gonna lose information or at least real estate on the left and right. So something that you could have made bigger, you can't make bigger. And so you can't take up the full uh, area of the screen that you have available to you. And that can get frustrating when you have very small print that you're trying to zoom in on and make bigger and you wanna make it even bigger so everyone can read it, but you can't because even though the screen has the capability of making it bigger, your PowerPoint wasn't set up the correct way. I think for most people, the reason why they would make the wrong slide size for the wrong screen is because of the defaults in PowerPoint. Now it used to be in older versions of PowerPoint, and here's a screenshot from PowerPoint 2010, the default used to be to give you a four by three aspect ratio slide because most people, when they were making PowerPoints, they were doing it in boardrooms, conference rooms, or in courtrooms where there was projectors that were projecting onto four by three aspect ratio screens, and that made sense. But at some point, everything switched over to HDTVs and widescreens, and so PowerPoint, at least in PowerPoint 365, which is the new subscription-based, and some of the more recent versions as well before that, before they switched to full subscription, gave you the default of the widescreen, and so, depending on what you, what version of PowerPoint you have, there's gonna be a different default that you might get. So what I always recommend for people is, once you figure out where you're gonna be trying your case, or once you figure out where you're gonna be presenting, figure out what kind of screens they're gonna have. So that way, as you go forward, you can build all your slides from the ground up for the correct size of screen that you're gonna be using. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with either black bars on the sides or black bars on top, and it's gonna look like didn't spend a couple of minutes trying to figure out basic information about the room. So if you do need to change those settings uh, from the default to the other version, the way you do that is by going into PowerPoint and in the design ribbon, there's a button all the way on the right called slide size. And if you don't see it, it might be because you don't have enough buttons showing and it's just in that customized subsection. And there's the button for slide size. You click it and it gives you the option of switching between standard four by three or 16 by nine. You can even customize a slide size. Let's say you're somewhere that has vertical screens or a really weird aspect ratio, like 16 by eight or 16 by 10, something like that. You can customize it as you need to. But for the most part, there's only gonna be one of two options, four by three or 16 by nine, and you could switch back and forth. Now you can always fix things and switch them after the fact but it's not perfect. And so you're dealing with 
real estate that you've graphically designed and it's gonna try and kind of smush things into the right spot or stretch things out to the right spot based on the way that you're switching but it's not always gonna be perfect and it can get really cumbersome and so depending on how complicated your PowerPoints are it might not be worth switching and so if you've made it wrong to begin with you might just have to live with it and so that's not something you ever want to have to do and so I always recommend trying to figure out where you're gonna be first and then make the slides accordingly. So hopefully that was helpful and can save you a lot of headache and heartache later on uh, from happening. So if you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys down there. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.